2016 Libertarian Party candidate Gary Johnson wants to legalize cannabis and decriminalize all drugs. Of course, as a libertarian, he also supports many policies that based on data are proven failures, including private prisons and even private police. But when it comes to cannabis, Johnson has been a vocal proponent of legalization since 1999. 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related, not use related. And that is not to discount the problems with use and abuse, but that should be the focus. So let's legalize marijuana now. I have always maintained that legalizing marijuana will lead to less overall substance abuse because people will find this as such a safer alternative than alcohol or the harder drugs that are out there. I am not a hypocrite on this issue. I have drank alcohol, I've smoked marijuana. I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke marijuana, but I can tell you in no category is marijuana more dangerous than alcohol. And yet we are arresting 1.8 million people a year in this country on drug-related crime. We have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world, 2.3 million people. Half of what we spend on law enforcement, the courts, and the prisons is drug-related, and to what end? Look, this is not about advocating drug use. 50% of kids graduating from high school have smoked marijuana. That's an issue that belongs with families, not in the criminal justice system. Half of everybody you associate with, friends, family, co-workers, have done marijuana at one point or another. And if you're honest, I'm sure that more than half the hands in this room will go up as to whether or not you've done marijuana in your lives. Is it the smartest decision that you've ever made? You know what, we can debate about that all night. But is it criminal? Do you wanna lock up your parents? Do you wanna lock up your kids? Do you wanna lock up your coworkers and your friends? Because the reality is, is that half of them do marijuana. We have tens of millions of Americans in this country who are convicted felons that but for our drug laws would otherwise be tax-paying, law-abiding citizens. And that's what this policy has done. And conservatives ought to embrace the fact that these are people making their own decisions. Liberty, freedom. Johnson is very familiar with cannabis. In fact, he was the CEO of a pot company for more than a year before stepping down in January to run for president. Based on his experience, Johnson also emphasizes the power of cannabis as a medicine. If the cannabis plant were discovered tomorrow in the Amazon, it would be declared as the greatest human discovery of all time. This stuff really has genuine healing properties to it. Let me offer you a prediction. In 20 years, 20% 20 of all pharmaceuticals will be cannabis-based. When you take marijuana with THC, it is a direct competitor to legal prescription painkillers that statistically kill 100,000 people a year. Marijuana has statistically or has not been shown to kill anyone. Unfortunately, Johnson's evidence-based approach doesn't extend to private prisons. As Republican governor of New Mexico, Johnson ordered two private prisons built, citing lower costs. Today, he still defends the decision, even after New Mexico fined private prison companies $1.4 million in 2013 for understaffing their facilities. What's more, according to several analyses, private prisons actually cost more to operate. For example, a 2011 analysis by the Arizona Department of Corrections found that some inmates in private facilities cost up to $1,600 more to incarcerate than those in public prisons. Additionally, a 2015 study from the University of Wisconsin found that inmates in private prisons are likely to serve as many as two to three months more behind bars than inmates in public prisons. The researchers say this extra time amounts to an increase of about $3,000 per prisoner. Still, Johnson contends that the war on drugs and overcriminalization led to the U.S. mass incarceration problem, not private prisons. In a Tumblr post in February, he argued that calling for the legalization of marijuana and harm reduction approaches toward harder drugs is clearly not the action of a governor concerned about filling prisons. But while it may not be Johnson's intention to fill prisons, that definitely is the number one goal of private for-profit corporations in the industry. Unfortunately, this policy isn't Johnson's worst idea for reforming the criminal justice system. He has also voiced support for private police, which would certainly widen the disparities in justice between the rich and poor 
and black and white. Based on my experience as governor of New Mexico, how does privatization work? Well, if privatization provides the same goods and services at a lower price, I'm always in favor of privatization. If privatization provides the same goods and services at a lower price, I'm in favor of privatization. So um, I think we all need to understand that police forces can be privatized. Unlike the two major political parties, the Libertarians and other U.S. third parties are ignored by the corporate media, shut out of presidential debates, and hindered by ballot access laws and other obstacles. But at a time when about 60% of Americans say a third major political party is needed, and outsider candidates like Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump are exceeding expectations, third parties could see an increase in support in November. In 2012, more than 95% of Americans were able to vote for Johnson. In the end, he only received about 1.2 million votes, or about 1% of total votes cast. This November, 100% of the country can vote for the third party. For libertarian-leaning conservatives who can't bring themselves to vote for Donald Trump, Gary Johnson presents an alternative to the status quo. 